Hi, my name is Hayden McDaniel. Today we are at the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, and I'm going to be talking about The Choosing of the Arrow by Henry Brown. Mr. Brown was an American artist who was born and raised in Massachusetts, where he apprenticed under Chester Harding in Boston. Here he was exposed to clay and immediately found his niche in sculpting. Once he had enough money, he traveled to Italy, where he studied for five years and expanded his sculpting skill set. Despite his love for Italian sculptures, he had a greater love for Native American culture, which leads us to today's piece. The Choosing of the Arrow is a very realistic depiction of a young Native American man. When you look at this sculpture in person, the reflective light off the smooth bronze material immediately grabs your attention. As you can see, the details around the body are very realistic, and you can see the muscle tone throughout the entire body. What also makes this piece so realistic is the scaled down dimensions of the body are proportionally correct. This makes the piece so realistic because in previous idealized sculptures such as Michelangelo's David, parts of the body were not always to scale. For example, the hands and fingers, or elongated torsos, were exaggerated. In addition, when you look at the figure's facial expressions, you can actually see the concentration and focus he has on his target. This is perfectly necessary given the fact that the man is reaching back to choose one of his arrows. You can clearly see that there are a lot of Greek influences on this piece. To start, this piece was created the same exact way that many of the famous sculptures would have been created in ancient Greece, using the lost wax process. Henry Brown also has the figure standing in a classic contrapposto position that was widely used during the ancient Greek times. As seen here, you can clearly see the similarities of the position with the warriors from Riasse. This classical position mixed with the fact that the figure reaching back for an arrow perfectly combines delicacy and power into one image. In addition to the Greek influences, there are some American influences as well. During the time that this sculpture was created, the West was going through a movement of realism and depicting images of everyday workers rather than gods and religious figures of high status. We can subtly see Henry Brown partaking in this movement by showing the figure in what appears to be a simple lifestyle of a Native American. This sculpture is so amazing because we can visually see the different influences of ancient Greece as well as the American patriotism all in one image. What I truly find fascinating about this particular piece is the time period that it was created in. During the 1800s, there was a lot of mistreatment towards the Native Americans, such as the Trail of Tears, and not a lot of people thought too highly of them. However, I find that Henry Brown is making a statement with this piece of artwork by portraying this Native American man in a valued way. I find that he made this figure stand in this contrapposto pose because he knew that the Greeks portrayed their significant figures in such pose. Henry Brown is showing you how he feels about what is going on during this time period and how he doesn't agree with the way Native Americans are being treated. This piece really is more than just a sculpture, it tells a story, which is why I find the choosing of the arrow a miraculous American sculpture.